Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. This morning I'm in the barn uh, and I'm going to uh, do a quick inventory uh, of everything in our freezer here. It's only a small freezer, uh, it's a chest freezer. It's just about three feet by two feet uh, or maybe even less than that uh, and we got it last year uh, to be able to store uh, lots of produce in uh, and we got it, <laughs> cooled it down and within 48 hours <laughs> I'd filled it up. Um, so during the winter stuff's come out of it and the spring stuff's gone into it uh, but I now want to have a quick look, see what is in here, see if there are fruits that I can make into wine uh, and jams and jellies and create a bit more space in here uh, and also to have a look to see if there's anything that actually we're just never going to eat. So here we go. Uh, courgettes. Yellow beans. Uh, these are the ones that we got this year. Raw meat. Uh, these are all put into uh, individual portions. Beans for stewing. So those are the uh, those are the print beans that I uh, I chopped very finely, but they're actually really tough. Bolotti beans and um, more bolotti beans. Those beans are ones that I grew last year. Uh, they are what's left of what we didn't eat. Uh, we actually had a phenomenal number of bolotti beans last year, so I haven't grown any this year, and we'll use those up. So this little tray uh, is full of uh, relish, uh, coarse liver pate, chicken stock, uh, some gooseberries there uh, and this is a, a lemon and mint cordial that I made. So I'm going to take all of these uh, into the house and either uh, use them up or dispose of them. Ah, runner beans from 2018. Uh, all in bags that are a portion size. Raspberries from 2017. Uh, I'm going to take these in uh, and I'll make either some jam or some wine. Bag of beans. Well, those are this year's. <laughs> and another bag of beans. And these look uh, like they've got quite a lot of ice in them, which would almost imply that the bag is open, uh, but it feels sealed. Runner beans still from 2017. More bolotti beans. This bag. Uh, this bag is full of uh, plums um, and damsons from uh, last year. The frost and the snow got to all the blossom uh, on our, particularly on our uh, little yellow plum tree uh, this year. So we haven't had any this year, so I'm really pleased we've still got some. But I can take these in and use them. And there's some more. And there's some more. Uh, and some more. There's some duck here uh, from last year. This needs using up. And uh, there's also some salmon. Uh, and that's from 2016. And I'm not sure that fish that's been kept in the deep freeze for two years uh, is very good. But it might be okay for the cat. Lucky boy. And then I have a vast number uh, of <laughs> stewed apples. There are two boxes uh, of cooked green tomatoes. Well, I know I'm not going to use these. Uh, we didn't like them. Uh, we found them quite acidic. And I've kind of gone off tomatoes this year. Uh, so I'll take those in, uh, take the filling out, but then I can reuse the boxes. This says creamy vegetable soup with beef from 2016. Um, don't think we're going to be eating that. Uh, there are little pots of chicken gravy, which we can use, chocolate icing, apple sauce, there's some red currants, and there are several tubs uh, of beet and apple relish. This is really nice, so I'll take that in. Uh, we can use that with cold meats and cheese. Uh, there are several containers of, what I'm fairly sure <laughs> is, is a lemon sorbet, uh, but we'll need to check that. Uh, and this is some raspberry sorbet. A beautiful colour. 
so all of this can go into the house to be dealt with. Uh, there are a few elderberries. Um, a carrier bag full of blackberries. Now these ones I picked last year. Uh, I actually haven't got out into the field to pick any blackberries this year. The only ones I've picked uh, have been the ones that are in the hedgerow that come over into our garden. But there's plenty of blackberries there uh, to make some wine with uh, and to have some uh, with blackberry and apple in the winter. And this box uh, just shows how many <laughs> renna beans uh, I harvested and froze last year. We simply don't need them. Uh, this year I've harvested and sliced an awful lot less uh, uh, less than this actually uh, we just don't need them so it looks like I'll be able to make uh, quite a lot of um, well I think you can make chutney from runner beans um, so I'll be giving that a go and the only thing left are, are two tubs of chicken stock I'm mistaken one was chicken stock and the other is cherries. Now we've got quite a few cherries in the house as well uh, that I harvested this year so they're in the freezer there and uh, and I've also just switched on uh, the small upright freezer that we bought second hand last year uh, to <laughs> also to take all the uh, food that we've been growing and because uh, I've been using food up out of that we switched that off earlier in the year so that's been off for a few months uh, I've popped it back on now uh, and then I can start filling that up but what I need to do and need to think about is do I want uh, all meat to go in one freezer and fruit and veg in another or for example should I use the small upright freezer uh, for all the meat uh, and get all of that in there uh, and then put uh, fruit and veg into this freezer and a mixture uh, of things in the house um, oh I don't know decisions decisions and that leaves me uh, quite a lot of space to be able to bring uh, some food from uh, from the house which <laughs> there is just no room uh, in any of those freezers to get anything else in uh, so I can bring some things in here uh, fill up this space and then start filling uh, the other little freezer too now the bag of runner beans uh, from last year that aren't in individual portions is not going to go to waste entirely I'm going to put that onto the compost heap So normally, if I was doing an inventory, I would write everything down, and um, I haven't done that on this occasion. But um, as I've recorded this, uh, I can write everything down uh, as I'm going through and editing this video, and I'll do it that way. The idea of food security meant nothing to me, uh, even three years ago. Didn't understand the importance of the feeling of having uh, enough food in our cupboards, uh, of how important that was to me. I think possibly because uh, we live close to shops, uh, we were both in full-time jobs and we went past the shops and just bought what we wanted when we wanted. Now we're producing our own food, uh, knowing that we've got enough, uh, enough to see us through. Now we are not fully self-sufficient for food, um, you know, we, don't have, uh, we don't have large farm animals to provide us with beef and pork and lamb. Uh, we have to buy those in, um, but the way we do that is that we buy uh, either from friends or from uh, very local farmers. Uh, so we know we've got uh, good animal welfare uh, and very few food miles. And those things have become increasingly important to us too. It looks like I have my morning activities planned uh, for me. <laughs> I'm going to take the raspberries uh, and the plums into the kitchen and make some jams and jellies and wine from them. Uh, either as individual flavours or possibly uh, in combination. And as I haven't had uh, my first cup of tea of the day yet, I think it's time I went and found that. And so, wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow. <laughs>